like you were y'all were moving into a, a planning stage here at West Pelzer, and, and what what kind of plans did y'all come out with? We finished up actually five years of planning, and so this was the last plan that would complete our rural renewal master plan, which stretched from 2017 to 2023. Um, so it addressed economic development, it addressed um, branding and marketing, and also addressed our expansion of our park system, um, as well as how to expand the rest of our ARPA funds. And so through that, through the five year process, what we were really looking towards and working towards was how do we go from 0% occupancy to 100% occupancy? How do we expand our park system um, so that we meet the state trend or the state average for 10 acres per thousand people? So how are we going to buy property or expand our parks? Um, we had branding done in 2017 and so this was a refresh so that we could um, be frank with who we wanted to be um, and it's kind of still keep the Go West tagline so we've got new wayfinding signs that's going in. Um, we've got new decals on police cars and public works vehicles that, that really start to, to push that brand to the forefront as well as new gateway signage. That'll be coming um, hopefully this summer. Um, and then the ARPA fund expenditures. Um, so spending those in infrastructure, um, broadband, and economic development. So for us it was infrastructure and economic development and um, our, our final plan that we put together um, showed us how to make the ARPA funds recurring funds. So now we know that every 60 months our ARPA line item will replenish itself. And so we've done a really good job of investing in the community, um, investing in our businesses, five-year plan to go from zero percent occupancy to a hundred percent occupancy has occurred. West Pilsner's full. We're looking for our next location of, to be able to perhaps build some new downtown retail spots or expand on our parking. We've got um, thriving businesses. Our, our, uh, we're in budget season as well, so finishing up the master plan with budget season was super helpful to help council kind of walk through what those capital expenditures um, would look like. But with that, now we have line items for arts and culture. Um, we have line items for um, capital expenditures for the police department. We have capital expenditures for our administration department. So things that have never occurred because we've invested back in the community, we're starting to see the fruits of that labor. We've been fortunate to receive funding from the le from the legislative delegation as well as PARD um, to expand our park system and provide some additional offerings. Um, so in Chapman Park, you'll see pour in place surface um, go down. You'll see ADA connections that'll go to our old, old town hall, which was a building that we purchased about five years ago as part of our initial rural renewal master plan. Um, that will be completed in the next 90 to 120 days. Um, we also received funding from the delegation to install a kayak launch along the Saluda River um, at what we call Riverfront West, which is 10 acres of wetlands that we're protecting. Um, so it'll be a, a park per se that will be only accessible by kayak or by john boat. Um, and so it'll have a picnic shelter, a picnic table, a trash can, and a kayak launch. So it's really just a passive park. The other component of our parks expansion that we're looking at is conservation. Um, and so we, we have watched over the, over the previous, or I have watched over the previous three decades as Powdersville has grown, or Piedmont has grown, and Greenville has expanded out. Um, and so we want to try to protect our, our boundaries. Um, and so to our west, we're actually um, bound by some large agricultural property. Um, and so we're going to start over the, over the course of the next year, um, we're going to start working with those property owners to determine how we can put some of that in conservation easements or how we can perhaps use um, uh, the conservation bank at the state level to purchase some of the property so that again we can protect our boundaries and continue to embrace our agricultural heritage as you uh, enter the gateway into town. Challenges are, are always um, always how do you how do you expend all of the funds still have an adequate reserve and then you know, also uh, fund all of your capital requests and so for us for seven straight years I guess this is the eighth straight year we have not raised any of our rates related to water or sewer that were not already at the corporate level so if REWA increased obviously we we had to we haven't increased taxes um, but we've saw um, our general fund increase and so that's a product of you know having 65 or 70 new homes it's a product of seeing some of those homes um, flip over time so as the elderly move out or they unfortunately pass away then those homes become sold which then have new market values which increases the property taxes it's interesting for us to look at um, over the previous eight years or my two terms as mayor 
what our reserve fund has looked like. And so I'm, I'm, uh, I was ashamed at the time, but not ashamed now to say, you know, when I took office, I had more money in my personal checking account than the town had in the reserve fund. Um, and so this, this year, um, we're a little over $200,000 in our reserve fund as well. So we've been, um, we've been very adamant and frugal with how we are, are spending our, our funds in, in certain instances, um, uh, but we've changed some policies so that future generations of mayors and council members will always have a 20% reserve fund. We're at capacity. I think we may have one vacancy on Main Street um, that's privately owned. Um, we do have property around us. I think that's one of the great things is that we still have some homes along our Main Street that could make great business opportunities, um, as well as we have some businesses that have changed over time. And so just past this past Friday, um, we welcomed the Fuel Zone with their second location, um, which is a, a, a nutrition bar. Um, so you can go get a protein shake or a meal replacement shake or a hydration drink, um, as well as um, Bennett's Mobile Detailing. Um, so it's a detailing shop that does corporate work, but they travel to your location and do it. Um, and so, th and that was a great adaptive reuse for um, a building on Main Street that was an old service station. Um, it's at 40 Main Streets. So you can go visit the Fuel Zone, hang out with, with Molly and Josh, and uh, let them tell you why West Pelzer is important. I, at the ribbon cutting, um, it was very moving to hear Molly talk about this felt like a family. This, this felt different than their other location, which is in easily off of the 153 and 123 bypass. Um, so this is definitely, um, you know, what we've instilled over the previous five years and talked about as part of our master plan is actually coming to life when other people or businesses start telling the story for you. As you grow on Main Street, is there enough housing going up for the growth you need? There, there is. Um, and so we've been blessed that, that we do not want to turn into suburbia. And so all of our current development has all occurred without annexation. So it's all infill development um, or was vacant property. Um, we have an annexation coming up next month that is um, a church that's located on, on Palmetto Road. Um, some would say, why would you annex the church? There are no taxes. There, there, there's no benefit to, to having a church in your, in your city limits if you look at it from a government value. You. Um, but we go back to our 2017 master plan that tells us that faith, family, and friendships are the most important. And so if a church wants to annex in, we're going to gladly take you in, put you in as part of the West Pelzer family. One of the most visible changes is a new, mur new, new mural out here. Yep. Uh, tell people how that came to be. Yep. So it was um, really a fast project that happened. We had a private donor um, give us $5,000 that could only go towards arts and culture in West Pelzer. Um, and so we had this... Um, 15 foot tall and 80 foot long blank wall um, adjacent to Chapman Park that was owned by the, by the town as part of our municipal center. Um, we're fortunate that we have the Grand Gallery and, and post-COVID we haven't opened it back up, um, but we had artists come in every other month from Berman and Clemson and AU and the surrounding area that would exhibit their work. Through that we met um, Grace Gilbert um, who now lives in Nashville. Um, and uh, we approached her and said, look, this is, the, this is all the money we have. It's a private donation. We want you to come up with a couple ideas of what this mural would look like. Um, I think she hit a home run. Um, it really kind of speaks towards the laid back character of, of West Bells, where you can see the sun setting or rising according on how you want to look at. You can see the trees, you see the agricultural property um, that I talked about earlier. That's, that's our gateway into town. Um, and it's super vi vibrant and bright. And that's the other component that we wanted. We didn't want a, a historical you know, mural um, that talked about, or that had a picture of a water tower or a railroad track. We wanted something that was fun that you could interact with. And so you've had pretty good feedback from the community about the mural? Absolutely. So our number one ask now is, hey, I have a building in town. Can I get a mural on the side of it too? Um, so in this year's budget, we've got some money for additional murals. Um, and we're always talking to the local business owners or property owners, kind of see how we can improve that through use of our, perhaps our hospitality tax would be a good use of, of encouraging that. For us um, in West Pelzer, we want to make sure that we tell a story, um, which I've, I've really, I've almost harped on for the previous eight years. If I don't tell the story of West Pelzer and the mayor's not the chief storyteller, then you make up your own story. And that's what we don't want to happen. West Pelzer was founded um, in, in 1913 as Frankville by John Franks. 
Um, and so for, for five, uh, almost five years, um, we were Frankville until the aldermen got together um, and changed the name to, to West Pelzer. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I toyed in my head of why don't we have a referendum and change the name of the town back to Frankville. Um, I probably would have been the only vote on council to do so. Um, but it's, again, as part of the rural, rural renewal master plan, it was all about um, finding our identity, finding our story so that, so that not only I would be the chief storyteller, but council could tell the story as well and, and staff. Um, and so what we have coined for our downtown businesses um, is that we're the Frankville Business District. And so we have um, special stickers to go on doors. We have um, one of those murals planned in our head of, of how the Frankville logo would look on the side of the buildings. Um, and we're going to start promoting downtown West Pelzer as the Frankville Business District. I always talk about fall as our season to shine. We'll catch on that next time. We'll, we'll catch on that next time. Um, but this year, um, we do have a, a private event that's occurring in Chapman Park, and, and that's Westie's Vintage, Vintage Market. Um, so it occurs every spring and fall. This makes year number four. Um, this year, they've expanded their offerings to Friday night. And so Friday night, um, they're roasting um, a whole pig. So there'll be barbecue plates for sale. Um, and they also have bluegrass music that will be going from 6 to 10 that night, free of charge, um, in, in Chapman Park. And then Saturday, uh, there's about 50 vendors of antiques, of arts and crafts, of homemade items, um, and that will be occurring from 9 to 3 in Chapman Park. Um, it's an amazing time. Come hang out, fellowship. Um, you'll have to find somewhere to park. You may have to walk a couple blocks to get to, to Chapman Park. Um, it's an amazing, amazing time. We will, um, sometime during the summer, and we'll announce it later, but we'll do our dog days of summer where we have our annual dog show, um, which is, again, one of those just fun, eclectic times in West Pelzer. Who else does a dog show but us? I can also say that Cinco de Mayo has become a huge thing in West Pelzer for our local businesses. Um, and so the Lincoln Tap Room will have um, a taco truck in, and they'll have a band in on, on May the 5th, which is a Friday. Uh, but also we have Don Jose's, our newest Mexican restaurant, in town. Um, they'll have specials as well, but um, rumor has it they'll have a mechanical bull that you can ride outside. So it's going to be a huge festival type day in West Pelzer um, on Cinco de Mayo. Welcomed um, this spring a new council member. Um, and so Councilwoman Alexander um, resigned her position uh, to take care of her husband um, and move closer to, to her son. Um, and so we had an election last Tuesday where we welcome uh, new councilman Thomas Scarfo. Um, he lives in one of the new homes and is from out of state. And so I, I said in the council meeting that I think it's great that we have, we have outsiders coming in, moving into West Pelzer and wanting to get involved. Um, so we're super excited to have him. Um, and then as we move through summer um, into August, we'll have, have filing for our November elections, which will be two council seats and the mayor's seat. Um, so we're excited to, to see what the future holds for elected officials in West Pelzer as well.